Welcome back factors. On this video, we shall be discussing the infamous WOW signal. The WOW signal is a strong narrow band radio signal detected on August 15, 1977, by Ohio State University's Big Ear Radio Telescope in the United States, then used to support the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. The signal appeared to come from the direction of the constellation Sagittarius and bore the expected hallmarks of extraterrestrial origin. Astronomer Jerry R. Amon discovered the anomaly a few days later while reviewing the recorded data. He was so impressed by the result that he circled on the computer printout the reading of the signal's intensity, 6 equals 5, and wrote the comment WOW! Beside it, leading to the event's widely used name. The entire signal sequence lasted for the full 72 second window during which Big Ear was able to observe it, but has not been detected since, despite several subsequent attempts by Eamon and others. Many hypotheses have been advanced on the origin of the emission, including natural and human-made sources, but none of them adequately explain the signal. Although the WOW signal had no detectable modulation, a technique used to transmit information over radio waves, it remains the strongest candidate for an extraterrestrial radio transmission ever detected. Let's dive into the whole background. In a 1959 paper, Cornell University physicists Philip Morrison and Giuseppe Cocconi had speculated that any extraterrestrial civilization attempting to communicate via radio signals might do so using a frequency of 1420 MHz, 21 centimeter spectral line, which is naturally emitted by hydrogen, the most common element in the universe and therefore likely familiar to all technologically advanced civilizations. In 1973, after completing an extensive survey of extragalactic radio sources, Ohio State University assigned the now defunct Ohio State University Radio Observatory, nicknamed Big Ear, to the Scientific Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence SETI and the longest-running program of this kind in history. The radio telescope was located near the Perkins Observatory on the campus of Ohio Wesleyan University in Delaware, Ohio. By 1977, Amon was working at the SETI project as a volunteer, his job involved analyzing by hand large amounts of data processed by an IBM 1130 computer and recorded on line printer paper. While perusing data collected on August 15 at 2216 EDT, 216 UTC, he spotted a series of values of signal intensity and frequency that left him and his colleagues astonished. The event was later documented in technical detail by the observatory's director. Theories and Hypotheses A number of hypotheses have been advanced as to the source and nature of the WOW signal, but none have achieved widespread acceptance. Interstellar scintillation of a weaker continuous signal, similar in effect to atmospheric twinkling, could be an explanation but that would not exclude the possibility of the signal being artificial in origin. The significantly more sensitive Very Large Array did not detect the signal, and the probability that a signal below the detection threshold of the Very Large Array could be detected by the Big Ear due to interstellar scintillation is low. Other hypotheses include a rotating lighthouse-like source, a signal sweeping in frequency, or a one-time burst. Eamon said in 1994, we should have seen it again when we looked for it 50 times. Something suggests it was an Earth source signal that simply got reflected off a piece of space debris. He later somewhat recanted his skepticism, after further research showed the unrealistic requirements that a space-borne reflector would need to have to produce the observed signal. 
The signal's frequency of 1420 MHz is also part of a protected spectrum, a frequency range reserved for astronomical research in which terrestrial transmissions are forbidden. Although a 2010 study documented several instances of terrestrial sources either interfering from adjacent frequency bands or illegally transmitting within the spectrum. In a 1997 paper, Amon resists drawing vast conclusions from half-vast data acknowledging the possibility that the source may have been military or otherwise a product of earthbound humans. In a 2019 interview with John Michael Goodyear, Amon stated, I'm convinced that the WOW signal certainly has the potential of being the first signal from extraterrestrial intelligence. Mati President Douglas Wacock told Diewelt that any putative study signal detections must be replicated for confirmation, and the lack of such replication for the WOW signal means it has little credibility. Several attempts were made by Amon and other astronomers to recover and identify the signal. The signal was expected to occur three minutes apart in each of the telescope's feed horns, but that did not happen. Amon unsuccessfully searched for recurrences using Big Ear in the months after the detection. In 1987 and 1989, Robert H. Gray searched for the event using the Meta Array at Oak Ridge Observatory, but did not detect it. In a July 1995 test of signal detection software to be used in its upcoming project Argus, SETI League Executive Director H. Paul Such made several drift scan observations of the WOW. Signals coordinates with the 12-meter radio telescope at the National Radio Astronomy Observatory in Green Bank, West Virginia, also achieving a null result. In 1995 and 1996, Gray again searched for the signal using the Very Large Array, which is significantly more sensitive than Big Ear. Gray and Simon Ellingson later searched for recurrences of the event in 1999 using the 26-meter radio telescope at the University of Tasmania's Mount Pleasant Radio Observatory. Six 14-hour observations were made at positions in the vicinity, but nothing like the WOW! signal was detected. To date, we have yet to replicate the WOW! signal. In 2012, on its 35th anniversary, Arecibo Observatory beamed a digital stream towards Hipparchos 34,511, 33,277, and 43,587. The transmission consisted of approximately 10,000 Twitter messages solicited for the purpose by the National Geographic Channel bearing the hashtag hashtag chasing UFOs, a promotion for one of the channel's TV series. The sponsor also included a series of video vignettes featuring verbal messages from various celebrities. To increase the probability that any extraterrestrial recipients would recognize the signal as an intentional communication from another intelligent life form. Arecibo scientists attached a repeating sequence header to each individual message, and beamed the transmission at roughly 20 times the power of the most powerful commercial radio transmitter. What do you think about the WOW signal? Do you consider this as a message from extraterrestrial civilization that was transmitted in search of other civilizations? Thank you for watching this week's episode and I hope to see you again on our next video. Keep safe, factors.